43 and 6 for Jordan Poole in Toronto, where, let's face it, Toronto's been a house of horrors for the Warriors, you know, in recent memory, right? You know, dating back to that that infamous 19 finals, but just even in the regular season, I think, you know, it's go up there in the winter, it's cold. Nick Nurse throws janky defenses at you. The matchups, specifically Fred Van Vliet has traditionally guarded Steph well. He eats up his space. He gets through screens. And, uh, you know, it was just interesting to see this. It's a different Raptors team, right? I I don't want to discredit the fact that they're missing a key chunk of their roster as well. And, and But it's a different look for them. But they still have all that length and, and, and a lot of those unique defenses that they like to throw at teams. And last night, styles make fights. And Jordan Poole, what you saw was just a quickness deficit. Right, they tried to put Scotty Barnes on him, ninety-four feet, and Barnes. I'm not sure that's how you want to use him, right? He, I get the versatility, the length, and that's kind of his reputation as doing that. But to ask him to stay in front of Pool and fight over those screens was really just a a losing proposition for last year's Rookie of the Year. And uh, Pool, he just went off, man. So let, let's let's talk about his game. Let's let's break down the different aspects of it. I think that. There was a couple things that I noticed. I'd been on his neck the last two weeks about his finishing and lack thereof. And you saw it. Was it in Philadelphia? Or I think it was in Indiana when uh, he went up and tried to punch it and got put on his butt from Bursette, right? And, and, and we've just seen him struggle to finish. He feels like he's not getting the whistle. He's putting up tough floaters. A lot of the time, he's almost making the shot more difficult than it needs to be. And, he, and he's just, it's, it's tough. And last night, what he did was he quick shotted them, right? He quick shotted them. He's, I think he's figuring out like I, I, most of the time I shouldn't be trying to elevate on guys. He, I, I get it. Athleticism size is relative in the NBA pulls a smaller guy who doesn't really play above the rim. And in his youth, you see, he gets, he gets excited. He tries to punch on people. He tries to really elevate and get up to the rim. And he needs that more, that more European guard style. And you saw him do that last night. Now, Perhaps some of that is the video work and seeing where he struggled and, and doing that work with the with the uh, this coaching staff. Some of it may have been you look at that Raptors team and he recognized like, yo, all these dudes have seven foot wingspans. Let me just try to quick finish. And so you saw him out in transition and the defense led to offense and let him push the pace. And then the three balls started to go right. But pace, you heard you heard Kalena. Uh, talk about it in the Warrior telecast last night. I've been talking about him slowing down and playing with pace all year and hoping that he would do it. And you, you'd see glimpses of it, but you also recognized his baseline was to kind of play sped up. Now, the other thing that I noticed about his game is as the lead dog, as the alpha, when he gets to bring the ball up the court, this is nuanced, but when he gets just, they might not even be pushing the ball. It might just be a slow walk up the court into a half court set. It seems like it calms him down and it lets him play with a better pace, right? Whereas opposed to if he's off the ball and he's running around and he's already going hundred miles per hour, it seems like that, that helps him play with a better pace. And, you know, it, it, we may be looking at a unique situation. I won't call it unique, but it kind of feels like pool flourishes as the lead dog as the alpha right and now that presents the question and clearly this isn't a question for the next couple years as so long as the core vets are here right but like is he good enough to be a lead dog and alpha on a team right I, I don't I don't know if we know the answer to that yet but what I do know is it seems to make him more patient and he he relishes the role. And, and you've seen these chunks of time where he's got that opportunity is is when he plays his best basketball. Right. And so the question, I guess, would be, how does he how do we get these performances when the team is whole? And once again, I think it starts with Clay Thompson, because he he he. To his credit, last night in Toronto, right? He they fed the hot hand. He moved the ball. He took shots when he could, right? And and I'm not saying every night. We styles make fights. There'll be nights where it's Clay's turn, right? But he's got to do a better job recognizing like Poole's got a favorable matchup, and, and it's very obvious when Poole is hot, right? Just like Steph, it's obvious when all three of them are hot, right? And so when one of them is, just feed the hot hand. I think that that would go a long way, as as well as. Letting him bring the ball up. And, and when, what that would mean is Draymond not doing it as much. Draymond is fine, grab and go in those, those push opportunities. But I think 
as nuanced as it is, is, is if the, the pace is slow and you're walking it up into a set, let Poole bring the ball up. It, I think it calms him down. It gives him a rhythm and, and allows him to play with, with a good pace. Now, I know y'all will be mad if I don't bring up that Kaminga only played five minutes. I know, I know. But, you know, listen, when you when you control a game from start to finish like they did in Toronto in, in really kind of a dominant fashion, you can't really get on Kerr about it. Lamb, Ty, they played well. Jermichael Green is starting to make threes, right? Just in the nick of time. And so it, it, it is what it is. It does feel like Kerr, you know, is, is, is he drawing a, land, a line in the sand, as they say? I don't know. I don't know. I think he's, he's got to remain more dynamic. It did feel like the starters were in there a little late, right? You could have you got a little more Wiseman and Kaminga in there. I think it waited till two minutes left in the blowout, but Nurse left his guys in as well. Now, you look at this Toronto team, and I think people are starting to see the writing on the wall that they are, you know, do, do you do you add or do you subtract or what do you do at this point in the season? And they've dealt with a lot of injury. And I think they are one of these teams where, you know, the vultures are going to start to circle because it, it looks like they may try to blow this thing up and, and, and just refocus, retool around Scotty Barnes. I'm not sure if what they have around Barnes really complements his playing style, right? He needs more shooting. And, and Van Vliet, is, as nice as he is, you know, he kind of needs the ball in his hands as well. And so, you know, I think that the teams are, are looking at that. So I'll throw out a little trade here. And and, and before I, I, I'm not in love with it. I'm asking. I'm not saying, hey, this is the trade. Let's make it. I'm, I'm asking. It, would y'all, would y'all hit? Would y'all hit this trade? So the other thing that I've heard from several fans, Raptor fans, actually, is they're like, hey, y'all don't want Wiseman? We'll take him. Like, let, let Majiri get a hold of Wiseman. And in Toronto, rightfully so, is very confident in their developmental system. Arguably the best in the league for years now, even though we stole their guy, right? We, we did steal one of their guys. Um, so would you trade James Wiseman for Precious Achua and Otto Porter Jr. back? To us now both of those guys are hurt Otto, i don't i don't think Otto's played a lick he's the toe thing with Otto. it's spooky i think we're all rooting for you know we all the dub nation fell in love with Otto. we all want to see him do well but that that may take some time i think achua has a, a an ankle sprain so he'll be back relatively soon um but he has struggled in his own right with toronto this year now ironically achua and wiseman were teammates at memphis Right, And so that'd be weird if they ended up getting traded for each other. Achua, if you're not familiar with his game, think Jordan Bell, but a little more refined. Like a better version of Jordan Bell. But he's just an explosive athlete, um, high motor, and has some of the intangibles that, that you know, have been missing from Wiseman. You know, like the hands, the second jump, like the, the, just the, the kind of natural feel of physicality out there. He has that. His ceiling certainly not as high as what Wiseman's is even now. And so that would be the appeal. I don't know, you know, if there'd be picks or what it'd be. But just throw that one out there for you as we inch towards trade season. And, and, and Toronto becomes a team, again, that, uh, that may get parted out here as we move that way. What's next, man? What's next? Uh, New York and Brooklyn, two of the hottest teams in the Eastern Conference. Uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping we split somehow one of one of those two before they get back for this big Christmas Day game. And I think the road trip will be all right when you consider the context of, of how it started and Steph going down. As always, hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.